again. It's been about a month since I turned the bulls out this year and during that time I've been keeping a close eye on these boys and trying to kind of get a good idea of how they're doing. If you've been with the channel for a while you know that I'm watching the bulls a little bit extra close this year because this year I am using two yearling bulls. In other words, bulls that have never been put to uh, this type of work before. So today I want to talk about the bulls and talk about what I've noticed and what I am hopefully expecting for the following calving season. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. If you guys remember when I first turned these bulls out, I was a little bit nervous and I think the way I described it was I wasn't sure if they would know what to do. And a lot of people left comments sort of uh, joking with me, you know, saying, what, are you gonna show them what to do if they don't know? Well, obviously that wasn't gonna happen, but I, I mean, I assumed eventually they would figure it out. I just didn't know how long it would take. And I certainly didn't think that it would only take about 30 seconds, but for our Sim Angus Bull Riveter, that's about how long it took. Got her. And once Riveter was getting to work, our Black Angus Bull that I've been referring to as Little Boy quickly got the picture and got on top of his first cow as well. Little boy here may not be a registered Black Angus, but I'm good friends with the guy that I bought him from and we're pretty confident of what his lineage is. And if he's not pure Black Angus, he's like over 90%. Little boy is certainly not as big as Riveter. We found that out when we weighed these guys prior to turnout and his attitude is quite a bit different as well. I think the way that I would describe Little Boy is he's just mellow, he's calm. You don't really see him getting excited too much, but because of that reason, you actually don't see him breeding quite as many cows as Rivet does either. This is Riveter, we call him Rivet. He is our registered Sim Angus bull. And I know a lot of people are gonna ask about him, which was my first question as well, is where does he get that white color from? In the breeding world, they don't call that white, they call it brown. And he gets that from being an eighth Charlet. So his makeup is, he is half Black Angus, three eighths Simmental and one eighth Charlet. And he just so happened in that eighth Charlet to be a color carrier. So these are my two yearling bulls. Well, I, you know, I call them a yearling bull, but really they're a little bit beyond that now. These two guys are gonna be responsible for breeding all, I, I believe we got 37 cows out here that need to be bred. Initially, I was a little concerned about whether two young bulls like that would be up to the task of getting all these cows bred. And what I kind of, initially had wanted was one mature bull and then one younger bull. Thinking that the mature bull would probably do most of the work and the young bull might, might grab a couple here and there, but it would be more of like a learning year for him. Bull to cow ratios is something that gets discussed a lot and I've, I've seen numbers that people go by, but honestly, I feel like a bull to cow ratio is gonna be unique to every different herd and every different environment. The numbers that I read for yearling bulls was about 18 cows per bull, and a two-year-old or older bull, you could do more like 25 to 30 cows per bull. Now, some people hearing those numbers probably think, yeah, that sounds about right, but I think of this in the way that a guy running cattle on the high desert where you need over 100 acres per animal, he's not gonna be able to get away with 30 cows to one bull because when you put cattle out on huge acreage like that, what they often do is they kind of break up into like little satellite herds of you know maybe eight to 10. 
and they'll roam that way because if they all stuck together they would have to move so quickly to find enough feed that it just wouldn't work. So in an environment like that your bull to cow ratio is going to be quite different. I'd say it's going to be more like seven maybe ten cows per bull. In my environment here I have got everything working for me to get a very high cow to bull ratio. In fact, when these guys are mature, I probably don't need two of them. One would probably be enough, but I do like to have two either way because you never know when one bull might get injured, one bull might have some sort of uh, reproductive problem. There's a lot of things that can happen with bulls and a lot of things that do happen. Because I've got plenty of feed out here for these guys and the acreage is relatively small, I think I run about one and a half cows per acre, give or take. So in other words, if there's a cow out here that's in heat, both of these guys are gonna know about it pretty much the second that it happens. When you're asking young bulls to do a man's job, you, you really need to take body condition into account and that's something that I need to watch closely. Although with the feed resource that we have here, I'm really not too worried about it. If I was pushing these guys a little bit harder or had them on less productive acreage, that's something that I would really need to watch because these guys, we're not only asking them to do like the most important job of the year, but they're also growing and doing all their own things as well. So nutrition for these guys is very important. In fact, it's quite normal for bulls to lose weight and lose body condition during breeding season because they are spending a lot of their energy chasing cows around. They're spending a lot of their time chasing cows around and they're not spending a whole lot of their time with their heads down on the ground eating uh, like little boy happens to be doing right now. During the first month after I turned these guys out, I noticed a lot of riding and breeding activity, which was exactly what I wanted to see them doing. And I'd say over the last week or two, that has started to taper off a little bit. Although, as I say that, I have noticed that both of these guys have not been getting too far from 2210. She is our, what should have been heifer, but she had a surprise calf this spring. You can see Riveter following her right now. And what I assume and what I hope this means is that it's because these guys have bred the majority of the cows already. A cow's estrus cycle lasts 21 days, so doing the math roughly, these guys have been with the cows for about two heat cycles now. And I would expect that they should have around 70% of these cows bred in that time. Getting 70% of these cows bred already is somewhat of a big ask, but I've noticed in the last couple of years since getting these cows on Redmond Minerals that that is a totally attainable goal. And I think that although these bulls may not have a lot of experience, what they lack in experience, they make up for in enthusiasm. <coughs> And the fact that I have noticed both of these bulls chasing around the same heifer 2210, which also happens to be the cow, I guess we'll call her now, <laughs> the cow that had the last calf, indicates to me that probably most of these other girls have been serviced at least once because not only am I not seeing them doing a lot of riding and breeding but I'm not seeing these cows ride each other and I think a lot of people don't realize that cattle will display riding behavior to each other if another cow is in heat. I believe that the females riding each other has sort of developed this way because it does help the bulls identify cows in heat. I'm not basing this on any science or anything that I've read or heard anywhere. This is completely my own theory and it makes sense. It's kind of like the cows are saying, hey guys, over here, she's ready. Another reason that I possibly might not be seeing as much breeding activity now is because it has been pretty hot here lately. And when it's hot like that, you do see a drop off in breeding activity. And I think not only is this because like, it's just hot and they don't feel like doing the work, but I also wonder if extreme heat has any effect on the cow cycle. Like maybe they stop cycling when we get into these extreme temperatures. And going along with that, there was a study, I don't remember what the exact percentage was, but it's like 70 to 80% of breeding happens at night when it's a lot cooler. And again, make your own joke here. A lot of people 
ask me why do I do natural service and why not just do AI on my cattle? AI is extremely common in the dairy industry and it's almost necessary in the purebred beef industry. But for commercial cattlemen such as myself, only a little over 11% of beef cows are bred with AI. I prefer breeding with natural service because, I mean, for me it's so much easier. And I've heard people make the argument of, well, you know, if you AI your herd, you can get them all bred on the same day, but that's really not necessarily true. That would be true if AI was 100% successful 100% of the time, but it just simply is not. A good AI breeder will get them about 75% of the time. So even on those beef herds that breed with AI, they still have to have bulls, what's known as a cleanup bull, and I remember doing this when I was in college because the college that I went to had a purebred black Angus herd and a purebred red Angus herd. And you could tell by the calendar if the calves came from the AI sires or if they came from the cleanup bull and we had to make a note of that. So I guess what it comes down to for me is that you're gonna have to have bulls on the property no matter what. So why not just buy some nicer bulls that you're happy with their genetic profile and just utilize it and not worry about all of the extra work that comes with AI. For a seed stock producer, which is a purebred breeder in the beef industry, AI or, or really embryo transfer makes a ton of sense because those guys need to stay on the cutting edge of what the genetics of that breed have to offer. But for what I'm doing out here, I just don't really need to do that. Every time I spot Rivet, right next to him is 2210, so she is what I refer to as the Lady of the Hour. Well, we probably better leave these lovebirds alone. I'm sure they want to go find a nice place to lay down and watch the sunset together. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.